to get a trolley bag. Like, hi there, y'all. Where's your transition glasses? Oh, here. I just want to find it. Because it's going to be sunny and I don't want to burn. Okay. This is my video, Ira. I don't know. Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I am doing a part two of last week's um, journaling session because I did enjoy it and I think I'm gonna do it all the way up to my birthday. I really like last week's one, although today I'm not on the balcony, I'm out in the backyard. I'm joined this time officially by Adam MJ who's just gonna be reading while I'm here. So no, she won't be popping in annoyingly like last week. I'm gonna be using the same website as I did last week. I'll pop the link down in the description again. I'm doing the uncomfortable emotion section and this is one that I've got plenty of, so it should be a good journaling session. Thank you for coming out. Come grab your camping chairs and sit out in the backyard with me and journal with me. All right, let's go. For the first question, what difficult thoughts or emotions come up most often? I think it's not the most frequent one, but the one I do have a lot of trouble dealing with out of all the negative emotions would probably be anger. I think I am quite patient and I won't get angry so easily. But once I do get angry, it's explosive. And not in the sense that I'll shout at someone, but I feel very negative inside. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily gonna affect the people around me, but I feel it so strongly and once that threshold is hit, there's like, uh, it's like a black hole has formed inside me. For question two, which emotions should you find hardest to accept? How do you handle these? I think the emotions I do find hardest to accept would have to be loneliness and helplessness because I don't like feeling like I can't do something. I don't take a proactive approach when I'm handling those emotions. As much as it's a negative emotion for me, I'm not in a rush to get myself out of that headspace. I think some emotions you kind of just have to sit with for a while in that time. I'm not just like sitting there doing nothing. Praise and worship, having a cry session if I need to have a cry session. And it works for me, for the most part, it does work for me. So question three, this one I had trouble choosing something I could talk about because I feel like if I say certain things, then some people are gonna get hurt or offended even if that's not my intention. <laughs> a choice that I do regret and a choice that I don't mind sharing is sharing personal things like mistakes, things that have brought me shame or things that don't bring glory to God. So sharing those things with the wrong people. There are right people you could share these with because it's like a burden on your chest, right? You can share those things with my pastor, with my leaders, with my mentors could lead me to the things that I do need to be hearing, the things I do need to be reading and meditating on so that I can learn from that thing, from that mistake, from that shameful thing in my past and grow from it and have a deeper relationship with God. I do regret the times that I have shared those things to get a secular reaction. Sharing your stories to certain people will lead you to react a certain way to that story. So if I was sharing it to the people who are in the world and they were proud about it and boasting about it, then I'm gonna be in the direction where I feel proud about it instead of repentant for that. Number four, I'm not too much of a person who gets stressed or frustrated 
majorly, whereas sadness out of those three emotions probably does the most. I think this is mostly to do with COVID for me. I can't see my friends physically and see them face to face and the same thing with like family and friends who are overseas i can't just be with them and enjoy their presence and i feel like when i'm on call with them i'd have to have something to talk about but i'm not always one who's up for talking and i like spending time with people in person without doing much with them or just like doing our own separate things but still being with them when that happens i usually have to just hone myself in and appreciate what I do have. Get out of my room, go annoy my sisters, go annoy my parents or even just be in a communal space with them and not do anything or just have my headphones on and work but still be around them. That makes me feel less sad about the fact that I can't see other people because the people who are most important to me are under the same roof. So yeah. Question number five. I think I'm not one who gets down very easily but the first one would have to be arguing that can bring down a good mood. I don't like it when I'm filming and other people are making noise. I don't like it if I'm like spending time with family or friends and someone gets way too heated about something that didn't need to be heated up about, that they didn't need to get heated up about. I usually just walk out actually, <laughs> not in this dramatic sense that I like stomp out of the room and slam my door afterwards. I usually just go quietly. I can literally walk out of there and they'll be fine afterwards. But if I stay there, then I'll be taking in that negative emotion. Second one, bad news. Obviously, I think this is for everyone. When that's the thing that's affecting me, I usually just find a silent place. I go to pray and then I think after that solitude and alone time with God and I think like I'm kind of calm about it. Obviously, I'm still upset, but I'm calmer about it. I surround myself with people just to prevent myself from falling into like a sad emotion. The third one is like when there's no rice, like you've got your food there and the side dishes or you've ordered food in and it's arrived but you don't have rice to go with it so that can bring down the mood instantly and how do i counter that it's a preventative measure i just make sure that there's already rice first before i even get my food ready or like an hour before i plan on eating number six another one that i had trouble with the generation that i grew up in instead of self-defeating thoughts we end up with like self-deprecating humor they don't come up quite often which is why i think i had trouble recognizing them and finding them but i do have them so the first one is that i've still not gotten anywhere and i think this comes up when i see people on social media if i see people i've shared like a group with or i've been in some sort of cohort with and something ties us together like age or experience and i see what they're doing i can think that oh my goodness like i've not got any of those things i am doing this or i'm only doing that or i'm still studying i live with my parents but which honestly doesn't bother me i then just realized that i never had a problem with it until i saw other people doing it it's like a mindset that social media has instilled rather than something you actually feel an artificial emotion if i can even call it that the next one on a similar note it's that like i'm not doing enough or i'm not doing well enough or i'm not doing a thing that makes enough of a difference again i think it's the result of comparison when i start thinking it i just say like oh but you're doing something what you're doing matters and then number three is that i'm quite mediocre i have a lot of things that i like doing or i do a lot of things and i'm like semi okay at it but semi okay is not the best the feeling of mediocrity i think again the result of comparison with other people. The way that I slap myself out of this mindset is just realizing that I don't have to be the best at a certain thing for God to use me. So number seven, my coping mechanism for a lot of the negative emotions would be prayer. After that, then surrounding myself with loved ones, friends, and family. Sometimes though, like if I can't call with the people I love or if I can't be with the people I love, then distractions work well for me. Right, I'm not saying that this is the healthy way to do it, but this is how I do it. I would distract myself Myself with something that makes me really happy or something that makes me laugh until I'm able to be surrounded by the people I do love and who can help me work through that negative emotion. Anyway, number eight. I think this kind of ties in 
right with last week and how I was saying I'm quite independent or self-reliant but I tend like when I'm feeling a negative emotion to not want to talk to others about it so myself and if not myself then probably my best friend and even if I don't have to tell them every single negative emotion or every single painful or upsetting feeling I think they would have to know the most out of everyone I would have said my parents but the thing with like telling my parents upsetting emotions or upsetting feelings is that I don't like them seeing or feeling a negative way especially because I know that even though they're staying strong for me when I'm feeling those things I know that it hurts them still when I'm like in the deepest part of that bad feeling I don't like talking I don't want to talk about it the way to connect with me there is just being there I think I get like sensory overload when I'm feeling a negative way but yeah that's how to connect and then number nine I don't think I'm afraid of dying but I am afraid of dying without having a relationship with God knowing that you can't be with him for eternity because you've chosen to not have a relationship with him and that terrifies me to think about that I think it changes when you realize what the most important thing to you is and with that I do want to just share a bit of scripture that encouragement is found in 1 John 4 18 where it says there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made perfect in love once you have the fear of God then I think the fear of everything else kind of dies down because you're able to reorient your thinking of what is most important. I think that's all the questions for today. I'm very happy about today's reflection on uncomfortable emotions. It's definitely something that I think is quite overdue because when I journal, it's like a daily journaling, just talking about you know what I did in the day and how those things made me feel but it's never focused on the way that I deal with uncomfortable emotions so I'm glad that I got to journal on that today and got to reflect on that today with you guys thank you so much for coming to this week's video if you have answers you want to share please leave them now in the comments I'm interested to hear what you think and what your uncomfortable emotions are thank you so much for coming here thank you for sharing this vulnerable talk with me i do appreciate it please don't forget to like share subscribe comment and press the notification bell and anything else there might be to do with youtube that is all for me and at the mj and gummy today we'll see you next week bye bye gummy say bye 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 say bye bye she's expecting bye. food bye Huh? Nothing. <laughs> of last week's uh, oh, reflective me. <laughs> He's like interrupted me <laughs> three times now. Oh. Yeah. Ani, you have your own food. <laughs> She's like, ready to have your food. Is she in it? Yeah, she they saw that. You wanna say hi? I guess not. Hi everyone.